Dan McCrum, Money Men, A Hot Startup, A Billion Dollar Fraud, A Fight for the Truth. Enter the world of Wirecard, a company that built its fortune on fraudulent practices and shady dealings. As revealed in Dan McCrum's book, Money Men, A Hot Startup, A Billion Dollar Fraud, A Fight for the Truth. This gripping expose uncovers the rise and fall of the tech giant, which began with a humble foray into online payments and quickly became ensnared in allegations of money laundering, gray market transactions, and cooked books. Journey alongside Financial Times journalist Dan McCrum, who uncovers the dark truths behind the company's seemingly meteoric success, as he interviews company insiders, navigates a web of subterfuge, and slowly unravels the threads of an intricate fabric of lies spun by Wirecard's management. Wirecard's Shady Path to Success In the late 90s, Wirecard started as just a small company with big ambitions and eventually became a leading provider of electronic payment solutions. Its founder, Paul Bauer Schlichtegrohl, initially ventured into the online porn business, but soon realized the potential in online direct debit payments. Wirecard dabbled in the shady world of online gambling, taking advantage of regulatory gray areas and banks' reluctance to handle such transactions. Bauer Schlichtegrohl opted out before long, avoiding an expensive IPO by orchestrating a reverse takeover and letting Dr. Marcus Braun and Jan Marsalek take charge. Despite their innovative approach, Marsalek's electronic payment system never worked until they worked together to find a solution, catapulting the now-public company to the top. Wirecard's Financial Shenanigans in 2014, Dan McCrum, a Financial Times reporter, met with hedge fund manager Leo Perry who handed him a stack of notes proving that Wirecard, a technology company listed on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange, was faking its profits. McCrum traveled to Bahrain to investigate one of Wirecard's business partners and discovered that the company was possibly buying fake assets. Further investigation revealed that Wirecard was in massive debt and hiding its true financial situation. When McCrum eventually interviewed CEO Marcus Braun, he avoided answering questions about Wirecard's financial practices. Wirecard Scandal Unravels In 2016, Financial Times journalist Dan McCrum receives information about the illegalities of Wirecard, a company previously believed to be a leading force in the payments industry. Upon review of a report exposing a grand money laundering scheme at the company, McCrum hastily posts a blog article about it without consulting the lawyers. As a result, the Financial Times faces litigation, and McCrum gets a bad reputation. On top of it, Wirecard's CTO Jan Marsalek tries to con the Financial Times into printing a story that would boost its share price, and the fake apology letter surfaces, casting doubts on the authenticity of the whistleblowers. Insider Trading at Wirecard Pav Gill, a legal counsel at Wirecard's Asia headquarters, discovers sketchy accounting practices and tips off the head of compliance. However, he is replaced during the investigation and eventually leaves the company with 70 gigabytes of files and email archives. Gill works with his mother to contact Dan McCrum with the data, which leads to a story about Wirecard's fraudulent practices being published by FT. The stress of the situation takes a toll on Gill and his mother, with Evelyn experiencing a stress-induced seizure and being diagnosed with a tumor in her lungs. Wirecard's Web of Lies The Financial Times investigation into Wirecard exposes a web of deceit, from market manipulation accusations to fake clients. Despite legal threats and investigations, reporter Dan McCrum persists in digging deeper, eventually discovering the shocking truth, Wirecard's clients are fake. Whistleblower Pav Gill reveals that McCrum's stories may have aided in his mother's successful surgery. Wirecard's Downfall The downfall of Wirecard, a German payment processing company, began when Financial Times journalist, Dan McCrum, published an article exposing their suspect accounting practices. Wirecard denied the allegation, but evidence started trickling in, leading to a special audit by KPMG. The audit discovered that 1.9 billion euros of cash was missing and could not be verified. 
Wirecard executives falsely claimed the money was deposited with a trustee in the Philippines, leading the auditors there, where they found small branches and no trace of the money. KPMG's final report found that Wirecard's payment processing business was not profitable, and most profits came from commissions by three partners that KPMG could barely verify. After years of fraud and lying to the public, Wirecard finally fell. As the dramatic tale unfolds in The Money Men, the truth behind Wirecard's spectacular rise and cataclysmic fall is mercilessly exposed. The company, built on a foundation of deceit, manipulated news, falsified documents, and terrorized whistleblowers in its bid for success in the tech industry. It's a fascinating exploration of the sheer scale of corruption among some business giants and the enormous undertakings, required to bring them down. The tenacity of McCrum and others in their pursuit of the truth reiterates that, in the end, even the most elaborate ruses can be untangled and the light of truth will always find its way into the darkest corners of deceit.